I gotta say, I'm surprised you made it this far. It'd be a shame if something happened to you now. You killed Mia. Now do me and finish the job. Hey, what's up guys? Red Damascus here. Today I'm gonna be explaining the ending of Resident Evil Village on the PlayStation 5. Well, basically, there's gonna be a spoiler warning. If you haven't played Resident Evil Village on the PlayStation 5 console, well, you should click away this video right now because you have to play first the video game storyline so in order for you to understand the story of Resident Evil Village. Without further ado, let me explain the ending of this entire story of Resident Evil Village. So, let's start. Okay, so by the time you're at the part after beating Heisenberg, there's gonna be a cutscene where um, Mother Miranda is basically distracting Ethan or mind controlling his brain for no reasons, I think. Well, Here's what really happened. So basically, Wonder Miranda is trying to trick Ethan that thinking that Mia and Rose are both alive and then Ethan basically doesn't care. He just wants to find his daughter. He wants his daughter back, of course. And what really happened is, of course, Wonder Miranda basically um, killed Ethan, but not like in, <laughs> in a violent way but he just like instantly get killed by Mother Miranda like Mother Miranda just grabbed his heart and yeah and she just sucked the blood of Ethan Winters but he, there's a big twist behind this um, cutscene so the twist here is after Ethan gets killed by Mother Miranda um, we get to see Chris Redfield and his wolfhound squad you know going to the village and checking on the mold from mother miranda's you know some kind of like you know some kind of like uh more of a bioweapon um situation here so after chris and his team split up chris and his partner of course a regular soldier you know just a hunter wolf squad but so they split up and Chris decides to go to the secret, you know, lab or laboratory of Mother Miranda and of course there's actually a connection between the original Resident Evil timeline and this new game as well, Resident Evil Village. So basically the connection between Mother Miranda is she's basically none other than um, Oswald E. Spencer's um, teacher for no reason like all i know is oswald e spencer was basically like the most evil like the like he's actually the boss of the umbrella corporation where he assisted wesker we, we all we all know who albert wesker is from the resident evil games and I'll, and of course um william birkin of course wesker's friend of course in resident evil zero so Oswald E. Spencer hires of them both because how did he manage to get in like connecting like get in line with Mother Miranda? Basically he was a student of Mother Miranda and the real reason why he tried to 
be so like he's like be, he's like being a fan of Mother Miranda's creations or something, and that's where he got an idea of of making his kind of like corporation and the the connection between Mother Miranda and Oswald E. Spencer is that Oswald actually saw a logo which we all know umbrella logo and he has the idea of creating a umbrella corp that's why he called he thinks of what this this logo name called like he basically turned the logo into yeah we all know it's umbrella corporation and that's why he was the one who's responsible for all of the viruses like the zombies the monsters everything but for mother miranda i don't think she really cared about spencer's you know ideas but she thinks that spencer was very thankful to her creations and her ideas plans for her future of course of what she might do after like the next long years of their lives of course so yeah that's their connection of course in Resident Evil Village Oswald E. Spencer and Mother Miranda now the next one is of course is of course the next scene is after Chris finds um, the laboratory he decides to throw a bomb at the mega Okay, I'm sorry if I spelled this wrong because I heard it from the video game. He said Mega Mega Mesite or something. That's what you call it. The big um, giant, I don't know, like a fetus heart or something. It's color red, of course, like glowing and literally being a giant thing or something. That's where Chris throws the bomb and he checks after he checks the laboratory, but... After Chris checks every files of Mother Miranda's history in her lab, she definitely kept someone in her cage. And when Chris checked the prison cage, prisoner like you know the cage there, um, she f definitely locked um, Mia Winters there for experiment. So that's where Chris found Mia Winters, of course, the real Mia Winters, not the Mia that he killed from the very start, because, of course, we all learned that Chris did confirm that that wasn't Mia, that was actually Mother Miranda herself in a disguise, so that's why Mother Miranda has abilities like um, changing her forms, like turning herself into Mia, or any, any people that we don't even know of so okay after Chris found Mia and Mia was asking Chris like where's where's um where's Ethan like where is he like Chris definitely said no I'm sorry Mia but Mia is like what's wrong like uh Chris is definitely like worried because he literally said to Mia that Ethan is officially dead but are you sure about that because after they both escape, there's a scene where Ethan wakes up in a dream where he feels something like something is very wrong with him. Like, why does he feel like he is in a cold situation? And he's when he looks at the straight ahead, he, he looks at um, none other than Evelyn from Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Like, Evelyn was like laughing, laughing and telling Ethan that you're dead. And Ethan was like, wait, what do you mean? Well, what Evelyn was trying to say is, um, Ethan is basically dead from Resident Evil 7, Biohazard. So the real reason why Ethan is actually dead is because, well, he actually got killed by Jack Baker. Wow, what a twist. But that's not all because the real reason why he's alive like we all know that he got his hand cut off his leg chopped off by jack baker and he uses the healing bottle i think or we call it a herb or something that's that's their version of calling it the herb or first aid kit sorry um and that is where 
we learn that Ethan is infected. He's not a clean human being, and that's why Chris and Mia didn't know that Ethan was. How is Ethan still strong and alive? We all figured it out that he was infected. So after this, Ethan is like ignoring Evelyn, like he doesn't care. Even if he's dead, he still wants to see his daughter, baby Rose, of course. And he wakes up in the Duke's house, like legit Duke's house. And the Duke is telling Ethan, I see you're having a nightmare. And Ethan feels like he's still okay, but his heart. <laughs> his heart <laughs> and yeah and after the duke is asking ethan where would you like me to take you ethan since the village is getting destroyed where are you going and ethan to tells of course the duke take me to miranda and yes the duke is already knows that he is he's trying to test ethan if he really wants to defeat miranda and yeah what a what a good merchant to be a friend of ethan <laughs> So after the Duke and Ethan already went to the Miranda, of course, so Ethan basically says goodbye to the merchant, but with one last goodbye is, of course, buying his, you know, <laughs> weapons, upgrades, and crafting, of course, and selling for, like, any gems, like, um, anything that is basically for the merchant. So after he says his final goodbye to the Duke, now it's time to fight, of course, Miranda, like... Okay, so Ethan basically fights Miranda, and sh she got headshot by Chris Redfield himself, like, oh my gosh, that was really good. <laughs> and after Mother Miranda gets headshot, now we get to see the real battle between Ethan and Mother Miranda. So, Mother Miranda basically transformed herself into some sort of, I don't know, like, a spider form. So, after Miranda dies, and while you actually just keep shooting her and dodging one of her attacks, she turns into, yeah, just like Resident Evil 7's boss battle, like Marguerite and Jack Baker, or any boss battle that I know of from Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, she just turns to dust. And after she turns to dust, of course, Ethan sees his daughter, Baby Rose, he goes to her and grabs her, save, like saving her, obviously. But unfortunately, after Rose is saved, well, the big problem is of course, Ethan is fading away or dusted because we all know that he's infected since he was it was explained from Evelyn. And after Ethan's dusting away, he is kneeling down and of course Chris is there and he is calling out Ethan to grab him and his daughter to escape. And that's where Chris sees the mega massive <laughs> I can't even spell the name Mega Massimite or something. Like the baby fetus heart or something. So yes, after Chris and Ethan were escaping, of course, what really happened was Ethan is um, getting weaker and he, he can't have his own strength when he's infected. So after... Chris and explains that there's a bomb that he put on the Megama site. Ethan is is tired of everything. <laughs> I mean, he's still holding his baby daughter. He he really loved her, and yes, the problem is Ethan is dying, and he, he gives baby Rose to Chris Redfield, and Chris tells Ethan that Mia is alive, but. He definitely trusted Ethan for taking care of his daughter and after Ethan tells Chris to take care of e Mia and Rose, well, Ethan sacrifices himself and he has the bomb with him, the trigger for the bomb on the Megamasite. 
Ethan looks up at the Mega Messiah and of course he pulls the trigger and yeah. So after Ethan pulls the trigger, we get to see Mia in the uh, chopper first with the Hound Bolt Squad and there's Chris and Baby Rose. Mia and Baby Rose are reunited and Chris Redfield of course, yes, is now in the chopper telling his squad to take the chopper up and unfortunately, Mia's asking Chris, where is Ethan? Like, where is he? Chris is trying to you know tell Mia just sit down and grab 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 on a of course seat belt because the village is about to explode and of course Mia tells Chris wait Ethan won't abandon us right and she's telling Chris what's going on and boom the village exploded and that is where Mia sees the sees Ethan course dead and that is so sad like <laughs> okay okay Capcom you're making us liking Ethan Winters and after he, after Mia's asking where's Ethan and then Chris is like he's gone okay he's gone he, he like he wanted to stay but he only wanted to stay is because he wanted Chris, Mia, and Baby Rose to all be safe, except for Ethan, he doesn't want to go with them. And also, the Houndwolf Squad soldier was asking Chris Redfield that why would the BSAA send BSAA soldier instead? They're not even BSAA soldiers, they're like bioweapons. Like, ugh, gross dead bodies, of course. And Chris is like, wait, something's wrong with. The BSA something doesn't feel right and that's why Chris is trying to tell the squad to go to the BSAA headquarters and that is where we might learn we might learn that there could be possibly a Resident Evil spin-off story or a Resident Evil 9 but after the ending of Resident Evil Village there's a post credit scene it shows here that we now learn what happened to baby Rose she has fully grown up that means Chris Redfield did listen to Ethan Winters instructions like take good care of Rose teach her to be strong and there she is in the future of this timeline where we get to learn that um, Rosemary Winters is now fully grown up and strong we, and she promised her dad that she won't forget every time it's dad's birthday, of course, and she has a lot of tests, but she's not, she's not just doing one of her tests, of course, there's also a job that she's working with, of course, the agency, I think, from the BSAA, I think, but we have to see an agent, you know, telling a joke to Rose that she, calling her Evelyn but that's not even like a serious thing that the agent said but it was just a joke of course it was just a joke and of course after Rose <laughs> transcends him to not call her dad and she also mentions Chris if she ever hears that name again she might call Chris like you know kind of a angry situation and after you know after the argument yes the agent feels sorry for her and telling her that you look a lot like your father and Rose eventually said she knows and they set off to the sunset and yes after leaving the father's grave for the life of Rosemary Winters we now learn that there's possibility that we will get a Resident Evil 9 and I don't even know what the real title is but it could be a Resident Evil game where we learn about the plans of the BSAA and wait um, the, it says here the father story is now done so yes it's true it's done so that is my ending explained on Resident Evil Village PlayStation 5 
2021 of course and it was really sad and it was amazing and I can't believe Capcom made a Resident Evil game that is literally one of the best thing I've ever seen in my entire life so I'm pretty sure Capcom is making more Resident Evil games soon I'm thinking I hope Capcom makes an announcement that there will be a Resident Evil 9 definitely because of the setup for Rosemary Winters the new character for sure or a Resident Evil Revelations 3 situation I think but it's all right anyways thank you guys so much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed this video of me explaining the ending of resident evil village and subscribe if you haven't watched my videos yet my previous ones so yes anyway guys goodbye and i hope you like this ending explained that i am referring about so yeah, bye, bye guys. Tell me pretty lies, look me in the face, tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.